Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Priyan Chagarwal and in this video, let me tell you about my course called TLE Eliminators that I've been running from April 2021. So it's been three years since I've been running that course. We have taught more than 5,500 programmers through that course already. Now this entire course, you know, is divided into four levels. So for somebody who is at a particular level in their competitive programming journey, they can choose to join a level and learn only those relevant topics. So first of all, you get live classes on all of these topics, right? Every single week, we have around one to two live theory classes and we teach you all of these topics in a very structured manner. Secondly, we provide you with curated practice problems on all of these topics that we've taught you. For example, if I teach you dynamic programming for maybe three weeks, then in these three weeks, I am going to give you two to three problems every single day. Now, in case you're stuck on any practice problem from the course, you get dedicated video solution where we talk about the exact intuition involved. How do you think? Apart from this, if you're stuck on any practice problem from or outside the course, we provide you with instant doubt support. Now, what happens in doubt support is that we have a team of around 30 to 40 experienced competitive programming mentors. These mentors are already experts and candidate masters on code forces, and they help you solve these problems in which you're stuck. Like you could come up with a debugging problem. You could come up with a problem in which you require some hints and overall, you know, you get to learn a lot from the experience of these mentors. And apart from that, there are other pretty cool features. Uh, you know, you can go and check out our website to explore them. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that TLE Eliminators is a live course, right? So every three months we launch one single batch and in one single batch, we run all of these level one, two, three, four parallel. So, you know, you can go onto our website and check out when is the next course coming up. And if you're interested, you can sign up for that. Okay, so recording has started. This is the first problem of Div2 uh, Div2 contest. That is, it is the Div2 A. The problem says that an array A of length n containing n positive integers is said to be super increasing if each element is strictly greater than the sum of all the elements before it. Um, in like mm -hmm. formally, we can say that every element A i for any value of A for any value of i which is in the range from two to n that AI should be greater than all the elements which are coming before it. That is all the elements from A1 till A of I minus one. This condition should hold for each and every I from two to N. Then they have given an example. You would have already read it once, whenever you would have tried the problem. Um, then we have been told that chef had a super increasing array A of length N with him a long time ago, but has forgotten all the elements now. The only piece of information he recalls is that he had a value x occurred at index k of the array um, that is a k is equal to x basically the kth element was equal to x that is what he recalls. So we have to tell can you tell chef, uh, chef if he recalls correctly basically we have to tell if there exists a super increasing array of size n such that a k is equal to x. Everyone else is getting voice. Um, please confirm if my voice is coming or not. Uh, guys, please confirm. Okay, so everybody is getting the voice. Um, then I think that uh, only one person is facing the issue here. Um, yeah, very well. Let's let's uh, go ahead. Okay, guys, please confirm whether the problem is clear or not. Let me explain this once again here also we call an array as super increasing if for every index i let's call it uh, as array a then at the index i the value here should be greater than the sum of all the elements before it that is sum of all uh, basically sum of or maybe let me just write it like this simply a0 plus till a of i minus one all the elements from here till here the sum of all of them if this condition holds true then we call it as a super increasing array we have been told that chef recalls that he had an array of length n the length of the array was n and at the kth index the value was x we just have to tell whether it is possible to have any array, let's call the array as A, whether there exists any array A such that on the kth index, the value should be X. Now, if you see that this 
size of array does not really have much of a significance uh, but for now you can just ignore this okay so guys is the problem clear we will have to print either yes or no um sorry sir ml is making noise a uh, bull is making some noise um by the way guys uh, please everyone just tell me in chat whether the problem is clear or not should we move on to the approach we can look at the test cases as well um k is always less than or equal to n and we have been told that sum of n overall test cases does not exceed 2 into 10 raised to the power 5 this gave us a very clear hint that even if we solve each and every test case in something like big of n or big of n log n or maybe big of n square root n, the solution will still work. Though we will solve it in a way better way, we will solve every test case in big of one time. We will come up to this. Um, but by looking at the test cases, you can get the idea that all of these time complexities will also work. So you can look up for this kind of time complexity. Uh, basically some approaches which work in these time complexities right okay so since you want to have um, the you just want to find out whether there exists any array a such that on the xth position this uh, sorry on the kth position x can happen so let's try to find out uh, basically any array such that the sum of all the L values may be something like a0 the sum of all values from a0 till a of k minus 1 this thing should be less than x right this is what we want we want an array such that from the sum of all elements from this uh, is less than x and at the same time ai is greater than all elements from a0 till a of i minus 1 this condition should also hold true uh, yeah by the way there is one difference in the problem statement they have used a one based one based index sorry one indexed array we have been using zero based indexing here but it does not really make any difference so what we want is this thing should hold true this thing should hold true right at the same time now since you want x to be greater than sum of all the elements from a0 till a of k minus 1 you would like to have these elements as small as possible right because you just want to find out whether it is possible to have even a single array or which uh, these two conditions hold true at the same time right so what you want is you want these values to be as small as possible this is the intuition right this is what this is the intuition which I got. I hope that you people are also getting such intuition. I've tried the same, but did not get accepted. Yeah, I will. Okay, but at the very least, you are able to get the layer now. Um, you tried, but could not do it as a different thing. We got this intuition. So let's try to find out these, uh, uh, basically the smallest super increasing array or the a super increasing array with as small possible as small values as possible so for the first value which is a0 can you have any smaller value than zero sorry smaller than one no you will see that an array a of length n containing positive integers they have written this thing in bold so the array should have all the positive values so the first value the smallest possible value for the first value is one then for the second value uh, whatever a1 you choose it should be greater than 1 the smallest possible value which is greater than 1 is 2 so let's put up a 2 here right basically you have to create an array a0 a1 a2 and so on so let me just write up a few more um, a3 and a4 so what you want is uh, you want to find out the smallest possible values for a0 you had the smallest possible value was 1 for a1 you wanted it to be greater than 1 so you have picked up 2 now what you want is a2 should be greater than the sum of these two that is sum is 3 so the smallest possible value which is greater than 3 is 4 then for a3 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7 you want something to be greater than that greater than that so you will get 8 a4 should be greater than the sum of these four 
so you got 16 here basically sum of these four was 15 and you got something greater than this that is 16 and i think that you people are able to see the pattern right you people are able to see the pattern even if you try to think of the next element you will see that this is nothing but this is going to be nothing but 2 raised to the power 0 plus 2 raised to the power 1 plus 2 raised to the power 2 and so on till 2 raised to the power 4 which will come up to be 2 raised to the power 5 minus 1 the sum of these people will be 2 raised to the power 5 minus 1 so the next element must be 2 raised to the power 5 which is 32 so for any general i you will like for any general i here you will see that the sum of uh, values still here will be 2 raised to the power i plus 1 minus 1 so the next element should be equal to 2 raised to the power i plus 1 this is a mat bit mathematical expression uh, you don't really need to think about the mathematical expressions because you people are already smart enough to notice patterns here right so uh, this thing is actually good for proving stuff but uh, if if somebody is watching the video who could not solve this problem i am expecting that uh, till this point you should just know till this point you should uh, just understand after that it's optional now you got the pattern that the array the smallest possible super increasing array would look like something like this 1 2 4 8 16 32 and then 64 128 256 and so on right now there is one thing if you like right now we wrote the array in one based zero based indexing but in reality in the problem we have been given k for one based indexing so one thing which you can do is either just say k, k minus minus to have the uh, just convert things to zero based indexing or just figure out that for the index one in one based indexing you will have a one then in two based index sorry on the index two you will have two then in on index three you will have three sorry eight four on the fourth position you are having eight on the fifth position you are having 16 like it's up to you i'm i'm not willing to complicate things uh the in a nutshell the thing is if you have one based indexing then at ith position you are having two raised to the power i minus one if you keep zero based indexing then you are having two raised to the power i at the ith position since the value of k has been given in one based indexing let's keep it like this so what can you see from here you know that at the kth position you want x so x must definitely be greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power k minus 1 can i say this thing because 2 raised to the power k minus 1 is the smallest possible value you can have at the kth position so since you want it since you want x to be a valid number at the kth position it should be something greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power k minus 1 does that make sense that our answer will be true like we will print yes if we have x being greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power k minus 1 this is the conclusion now let me read the chat once there are so many messages oh i have tried the same okay oh uh, yeah use the prefix sum we got this great yes absolutely proof wala chal jayega but 30 tak hi jayega because yeah absolutely we are coming up to this okay so this is really good that even before i uh, told about it somebody actually mentioned that if k is very huge let's say if k is equal to 100 then you can't really store 2 raised to the power like you can't really find 2 raised to the power 100 minus 1 if you see it's a really huge value you can't even store it inside an integer or a long one. and we know one thing that in the constraints it has been given that x is not a very huge number x is something in the range from 1 till 10 raised to the power 9 so if in case 2 raised to the power k minus 1 is greater than or equal to basically if if you see that k minus 1 is something greater than or equal to 30 right in that case 2 raised to the power k minus 1 will actually be greater than or equal to 10 raised to the power 9 so you know that x would like not to be able to satisfy this condition for sure so if k is greater than or equal to 31 you can easily say false you can easily say no otherwise in the other case you can just compare these values right 
can you explain k k greater than 30 condition yeah i can explain this just uh, one more minute let me read the chat once again i was filling test case of this one um okay some oh yeah i will come up to this okay um uh, leave everything just tell me you all of you actually got till this place right that what i want to see is this thing x should be greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power k minus ha na everybody got till this point now the problem is if you try to say yeah i just compare x with this amount this value is very very huge you uh, let's say if you are uh, using any even in any programming language maybe in something like c++ if you say power of 2 To, like two raised to the power k minus one. If you just try to find out this amount, this value, something uh, in this way, it will. Uh, I'm not really sure if it will give a wrong answer or something really bad. But at the very least, it won't work properly. And this is obvious. You can't even store this value. Like you can't store this value inside. Uh, you can't store a value like two raised to the power hundred inside an integer. You know, it's not even a good practice to use something like this here. but the key idea is let's say if this uh, you know that the largest possible value of x will be 10 raised to the power 9 so if you know like to actually 10 raised to the power 9 is approximately equal to 2 raised to the power 30 it's a little less than this so if you know that 2 raised to the power k minus 1 is actually greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power 30 in that case you can directly say no you don't really need to find what is 2 raised to the power k minus 1 if you know here that k minus 1 is actually greater than equal to 30 we are getting this equation from here that in case if k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 30 then 2 raised to the power k minus 1 will be greater than or equal to 10 raised to the power 9 at the very least which means that 2 raised to the power k minus 1 will be greater than equal to 10 raised to the power 9 and this 10 raised to the power 9 is the maximum possible value for x x cannot be greater than this so you can like actually it could be greater always yeah so in this case you can easily say no in the other case if k minus 1 is less than or equal to 30 actually less than 30 in the case when it is less than 30 because even if it is equal to 30 it still is gone in that case you can find out what is 2 to the power k minus 1 which like you can easily find out and then just compare x with 2 to the power k minus 1 now let me read chat once again um did not care for the value of k in general this is the point where i got wrong uh yeah you got you got wrong at this point uh there is no need to worry about it like we are giving contest so that we make such mistakes and learn from them um uh, instead of power we simply use log it does not pose a problem right um yeah you can use log but i do try to avoid log as well because log can have some precision errors and once i got a really bad problem with it you might have seen that many people use log to find msb or lsb and it can actually fail for some specific value let's say something like 2 to the power 58 minus 1 there is some value which i don't really recall right now but for that msb or lsb can give incorrect answer which are using long so i am not really having a very good experience with long that's why i avoid it um if the test cases are very strong it might uh, burst you in if you are using long yeah it would be even exceed Uh, so many way to store it uh, yeah oh yeah there is one more thing if you wanted you could have done you could have said here i can store something like to even till 2 raised to the power 10 or 2 raised to the power 11 inside a long long so sorry 10 raised to the power 10 or 10 raised to the power 11 so you could have said here if k is greater than equal to 40 then your answer is definitely no otherwise store 2 raised to the power k minus 1 inside a long long data type you could have done this thing if you did not want to get confused with all this here to 10 is upon 9 yeah uh, but still you will have to make up these two if conditions 
or just go up with a for loop or the other thing you can do is just go up with a for loop find out what will what is the smallest possible value you must have at this position and as long as you see here a of i for any well for anything where i is less than k uh, this exceeds x if at any point it exceeds x then you can easily say here yeah, the answer is not possible there are multiple ways you could do it when in any you want power function is work on float sometimes and it can give approx uh, yeah power function works with float so it can give incorrect answer uh, k is greater than 30 also work uh, yeah so what i have written here is i think also this k minus 1 should be greater than equal to 30 so k should be greater than equal to 31 which means that k is greater than 30 yeah so i have written the exact same thing here I guess brute force will also work here. Yeah, the brute force will also work. They have actually given the constraints in a way that even if somebody is writing brute force, it will still work. But I do suggest to learn about this as well. Like we are using some maths in case if for somebody it looks a bit complicated, try to push yourself. Try to push yourself to learn new things um, because this is something you will eventually have to do. Right. What is meaning of some not exceeding 2 into 10 is. Um, Okay, so um, somebody is asking what is the meaning of this amount? Uh, see, let's say there are 10 test cases. And first test case is having n1, the value of ns n1, the second test case is having the value of ns n2, n3, and so on till n10, n10, right? If there is something like this, then what is that? And let's say you wrote a time, let's say you wrote uh, some solution which is working in big of n time for every test case then eventually what happens is for this first test case you are having a big of n1 time for the second one you are having a big of n2 time for the third one you are having a big of n3 time and so on till the last one having big of n10 time overall time complexity is the sum of all these ends you know right so in case if there was no such constraint, then in the worst case, the sum of n could have been as large as n into t. For every test case, it could have been uh, whatever is the, maybe let me write it as uh, n max, whatever is the maximum possible value for n, that is this amount. It would have been this much, but they have given a constraint that they will make test cases in such a way that sum of n will never exceed some given amount. So if your solution is actually having this time complexity in total, basically big of n per test case, uh, giving this much time complexity, then your solution will pass. This is the meaning of this, this sentence here. I hope it's clear. So guys, should we move on to the code or does anybody have any more doubts in this problem? Uh, by the way, for those who are watching on YouTube, please give your feedback, whether you like this way or the other way here i did not read the chat much while explaining instead i explained the approach once completely for the youtube people and then i discussed the routes uh, by the way what about you people uh, did you like this way of taking routes or the other way that i tell something and then i take doubts anyway yeah that's the, that, that's the best thing i like if i was at your place i would have also been in this way uh, I just want the content, right? Okay, so let me just give a very small overview of what is my template. Um, you can ignore these things. Um, this, like, you know, that the uh, run at the runtime, your code control will start from here. So this this line will actually just uh, make the process of taking input and output a little faster. Then I am taking the number of test cases as input, and ignore this line. Ignore this line. Um, for every test case, I'm running up, I'm calling a function named solve and inside the solve function, I took the input, basically the advantage of writing up, so, uh, writing up a solve function here is that for every test case, I have to just write up my content here. Uh, it allows me uh, to do something like this, that in case if I know that this is an edge case, I don't really want to, like, I won't have to write up. A, if else if and nested if else conditions 
I can just directly say return. Um, it just makes the job a little easy if you did not understand. Just don't worry about it. Right in the conventional way. Um, look at this. The main thing for every test case, I am taking n k and x as input. Then I am saying that hey, in case if k is greater than thirty, from where did I get this equation? I got it from here. Um, we got this here. Key. Uh, yeah, we got it here. That in case if two is the power k minus one is greater than this amount, then I compared this k minus one with thirty. From there, I got k r if k minus one is greater than thirty, or I can say that if k is greater than thirty in itself, then in that case, I know that I will have to print no. Otherwise, I will just try to find out the minimum possible value I need. The what is the minimum possible value I need to have at the kth position? That is this amount. Two raised to the power k minus one. I will compare y value x with this minimum amount. In case if x is greater than or equal, then print yes. Otherwise, print no. That's it. That's what we discussed in the logic. That's what I wrote in the code, and it did work out. So somebody is asking that what was that algo debug? Ah, uh, for now, uh, for now I don't want to discuss this in the PCD. But I after the PCD I can tell you about this and right. Ah, uh, please ask me the same question after the end of the recording. Fine. Shall we move on to the second problem, guys? Please say yes or no. Okay, great. Anti triangle. This is the second problem of div two contest. In the div one contest, I think this was the first problem. Um, yeah, this was the first problem of in div one. Uh, anti triangle. The problem says that. Chef has a wooden branch of length L. Chef also loves triangles, and uh, he would like to obtain two more branches and arrange them in a shape of triangle that he can admire forever. Um, Chef set out to the nearby woods, determined to find two appropriate woods. There were n branches lying around the woods. The ith branch, the ith of which had a length of a i. All the these lengths were distinct. That is, no two branches have At the same length. Furthermore, none of uh, the lengths exceeded ten raised to the power nine. Uh, yeah, story falls in the um, uh, shockingly, chef could not take any pair of these branches to form a triangle with his existing branch. And can you give the examples of lengths of the branches chef would have found formally? Okay, so till this point, this was just a stupid story. Uh, from here, the name, the main problem starts. Uh, basically, they have given it more in more formal words here. You have been given n and l, and we have to find out an array of n such that each a i is in the range from one to ten raised to the power nine. A i is not equal to a j for i is not equal to j. Basically, it means that all the values of the array should be distinct. For any pair i comma j such that i is less than j. It is impossible to form a pair of sorry form a triangle with positive area whose lengths whose side lengths are a i a j and a l. Basically, this means that if you choose two distinct indices, then the values on those two distinct indices and l, these three values cannot be the side lengths of a triangle with positive area. And then they have actually told us about uh, just a reminder that. Um, About the triangle inequality, that three positive numbers x is less than equal to y is less than equal to z. Basically, z is the largest value can form the sides of a triangle with positive area if and only if x plus y is greater than z. This is something we studied in school. Um, this is something we studied in school that if you have a triangle with some positive area, then Uh, and let's say that the sides of the triangle are a, b, and c. Um, in the order a is less than equal to b is less than equal to c. Basically, if c is the largest side in the triangle, then a plus b should definitely be greater than equal to c. Or you can just say that a plus b should be greater than c. A plus c is should be greater than b, and b plus c should be greater than a. In whatever way you ha would have studied in school. I studied it in it in this way, like my teacher taught in this way, that sum of any two sides should be greater than the third side, right? And what we want to do is we know that one of these 
size would definitely be L and we have to create an array such that it will have basically if you choose X and Y as two elements from the array which you would have created then X, Y and L should not form a positive area. Basically the largest of these three should have um, if you have three sides A, B, C and you want that these three should not be uh, these three should not um, satisfy any of these conditions. The sum of two sides should never like should not be equal to the third one. Basically any one of these should fail or you can say key the maximum of a comma b comma c should be greater than uh, the minimum guy and the middle guy. So uh, if a is the largest guy then a should be greater than b plus c or if you want to write it in this way then you could have said here 2 into a maximum of a plus b uh, 2 into maximum of a b and c should be greater than a plus b plus c either you can say it in this way like uh, say it in whatever ways if you say here a is the largest side in a b c then the equation should be that a should be greater than or equal to b plus c if this thing happens, then you can say that a triangle cannot be formed. Uh, right. Till this point, we are all done. We just have to figure out an array such that uh, whatever two elements, which um, who was the person like they had a name. Yeah. Steph. So whatever two elements Steph chooses along with L, let's say he chose AI and AJ then ai aj and l should not form a triangle this is the condition so we will come up to the solution but before that please tell me whether the problem is clear or not because if the problem is not clear and I just directly go to the solution it will just waste your time then um clear yes clear okay okay um i think that uh, none of them none of you said no so probably it is clear to everyone so let me tell you about the observations which I had here, like the intuition which I had. The first intuition which I had is, uh, okay, so first of all, what I did is I looked at the constraints. I found that L can be very huge also. Like as soon as I looked at the constraints, I got one intuition in my mind or basically clicked an idea that what if let's say L is 1 e9. Let's take an extreme case. If L is 1 e9 or basically 10 raised to the power 9 then I can take up all the elements in the areas 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on till n. n is not so huge. Uh, sorry, n is not so huge. I knew about this because they had actually clearly mentioned this thing here that uh, n is less than 1000. So I had this thing in my mind. So I had just got to this idea here. I can take up elements in this way. 1, 2, 3, 4 till n and l assuming that it is very huge not even not just 10 is the power 9 even if like let's say n is 1000 and i'm having an array from 1 to 1000 then even if l is something like 10 is the power 4 then it does not matter which two elements i choose from the array ai plus aj will definitely be less than l so i can clearly say here if l is a value greater than equal to 10 is the power 4 it will work even for something like 2 into 10 raised to the power 3, basically 2000. But to be just on a very, very, very safe side, I said here, if L is something like this, greater than or equal to 10 raised to the power 4, then for this kind of an array, I will definitely get none of uh, the pair of elements being able to form a triangle. Right. I think that this approach really does make sense, which is working for all L for all very large values of it. Okay, again, uh, doubt time. Anybody having any doubt in this part? I think that there should be no doubt here. Uh, probably the intuition should also be clear that why did I get this idea? Ki what if L is very huge, then I create this triangle. It's clear here, um, like, the constraints as soon as I saw, saw the constraints even it will happen with you here 
if you look at the constraints you see kr l can be very huge and maybe not common for uh, beginners but i think it can be intuitive for a lot of people that you might just get the idea in your mind kr if l is very huge i can take up all the values to be very small so that the sum will always be less than l now what if l is equal to a very small value maybe like 1 or maybe like 2 something like this basically all the other cases ls or you, if you want you could have even taken ls 2 into 10 raised to the power 3 it would have also worked but for now i am taking 10 raised to the power 4 just to be simple like it will take up less efforts to write than this now for talking about all the cases where ls is less than 10 raised to the power 4 to me it was intuitive that i can say something like 1 l plus 1 2 l plus 1 and so on but even in case of it is not intuitive um directly you could have got the idea by looking at the test cases such that for n equal to 5 and l equal to 2 the test cases hinted it in this way here l is equal to 2 if i take a difference of 2 or anything greater than 2 then in that case I will not be able to have uh, like any two sides because um, the difference, the absolute difference of a i minus a j for any i and j which are not equal, if their difference is always less than greater than equal to l, then the maximum guy, the maximum of these two, let's say that a j is the maximum one, or let's say that a i is the maximum one here, so that absolute just remove this absolute ai minus aj will be a positive value so ai minus aj is always greater than equal to l which i can say is ai is greater than or equal to aj plus l and this is violating the condition of the sum of two sides to be greater than the third one so i can like this is the verification of why this method will always work if i just have L or something greater than L as the difference between each two sides. Uh, sorry, for all the lengths of the branches. In that case, I will always have the a valid uh, a valid array, right? I will always have a valid array in this way. So I can just have one L plus one, two L plus one, three L plus one, and so on till. Um, n minus 1 l plus 1 right you can just have it in this way these will be n elements so i think that the approach is done so guys tell me whether the approach is clear or not do you guys have some doubts i will be happy to take some doubts if you have Could you please recap the intuition? Okay, I can. Uh, can we just push the element just greater than the sum of x and y? Um, I did not understand that. What is x? What is y here? What are you referring with x and y? Um, yeah, let me discuss about the intuition here once. Okay, you are saying that what if I take ai and aj and something greater than that? Like there is no relation between some of you. You don't have anything to do with a i and a j and a k uh, with cons like three elements of the array. One of the sides of the triangle is fixed to l, so you just have to do something with the other two. Uh, whatever you are saying, ki if I just pick up the third guy to be greater than the first two, you will still have to make sure that you are following these conditions. Like you can try to figure out, you will be able to see key. your approach will have some flaws. Or maybe I could not understand what you are trying to say. Okay, coming back to the intuition once again, like it's discussing the complete intuition. Uh, this is something we already know. Like uh, in case if you didn't know about this during the contest, now you know that this is something um, considered as a prerequisite. They have actually mentioned this just in case if somebody did, know, did not know about it. 
um then like we are just talking about that till here from there on we actually came up to the so ha huh, till the after this point we came up to the solution the intuitions so i got the idea that what if l is very huge since l could have been as large as 10 raised to the power 9 i got the idea that what if l is very huge in that case something like this where oh, i just tried to have something like this since i wanted the largest side of the triangle to be greater than the sum of the other two sides i just had this in mind ki um i will have l as the largest side so i will just try to have the other two sides being as small as possible since i have to pick up n distinct elements so i can just pick up the n first n natural numbers so that the sum of any two of these will never be greater than the value of l so my condition will always fulfill this condition will always fulfill basically there will be no possible uh, combination of uh, sides which uh, can form a triangle right after this i had the problem that what if l is not so huge what if l does not follow this condition what if l is very small something like this in that case what will i do so i just got the idea ki um, now since l is not so huge and like i got the idea from the test case actually um like as soon as i saw this i thought ki in the test case they have very small values of l so let's read the test case solutions maybe i get some idea here and here i just saw ki uh this l was equal to 2 here and they had taken this kind of a case where uh, the elements are actually having differences greater than or equal to the value of l from there i got the idea that okay if for every two possible values of ai aj where ai is greater if you just pick up any two elements in this way in that case if i could just make sure that this happens the largest side being greater than the sum of the other two which means that ai minus aj should be greater than equal to l so i can just have elements in this way 1 l plus 1 2 l plus 1 3 l plus 1 i got this pattern in my mind you can have different solutions as well the problem can have multiple solutions this is the way in which i solved it so are we good to go are we good to go to, to the court or are there any doubts um i see no doubts so okay thank you great so i think that we can move on to the quote um since i have already told you about the template i have like you can ignore these lines and you can ignore this dbg and crndl wherever you see these three words dbg debug crndl just ignore them um if you want to know more about them that what is it what it is then you can watch priyansh's video on his channel uh, just search about um i'm not really sure of what the title is it is something like uh debugging uh good way to debug or something like that you will if you try to search about it you will find it just try to search priyan shakar while debugging template or debugging how to debug code something like that you will get the video and recommendation okay coming back for a, like this solve function will work for each and every test case now for every test case you are having two things to take up as input l sorry n and l you can see this in the input format and l n and l are the two things which you have to take as input in case if l is something like uh, a value greater than equal to 1e4 which we discussed in the logic then just we had an array as uh, starting from 1 till n the first n natural numbers in the other case if l is less than less than 1e4 in that case i am just printing i into l plus 1 where i is from 0 till n minus 1 so this is basically printing this pattern 1 l plus 1 2 l plus 1 3 l plus 1 and so on till n minus 1 l plus 1 1 n minus 1 into l plus 1 and then i am just c out and l to go to the next line that's it can we use the splitting condition as l is greater than equal to 199 yeah you can you can use this as the uh, splitting condition the main reason why i didn't go with it is 1e4 looks like a very good number to me 
so like i was just lazy to find out the exact number and i didn't really care about it because i just noticed ki even if l is something like 1 e5 these numbers will still be in the range from 1 till uh, 10 raised to the power 9 this is something you need to notice um in case if l was something like even 10 raised to the power 5 it will still work even for 10 raised to the power 6 but for something like 10 raised to the power 7 or 10 raised to the power 8 it can fail uh, but in those cases our code will be going on in this if condition so there is no need to worry about it i hope that we are good to go to the next next problem guys just tell me in chat shall we move on to the next problem or do you have any doubts okay great so uh, now let's move on to the third problem of div2 this was the second problem of div1 abc conjecture um unfortunately my code is not really pretty here um but at the very least i will try to tell you about the logic properly for the code um i will actually link up a different code i will code it again and i will uh, give a different submission link so you can find out a cleaner code in the description for now let's uh, look at the problem you are being given two strings a and b both of the strings have length n containing only the characters a b and c these are the only three characters a string can have in one move you can modify string a as follows choose three indices i j and k such that i is less than j is less than k such that a i is a a j is b and a k is c um and then swap so uh, yeah ba basically the subsequence this is a subsequence of the array a that is a b c we can swap the values of ai and ak that is turn the subsequence abc into cba then they have given a given an example so as an example if we have something like cac bacd we can choose this a this b and then this c and then swap them so you will get ccc ccc and then ba b a remains same then at this position of c we have an a now so we have an a here and then at last b um by operating on the underlined subsequence abc yeah we just operated on this underlined subsequence and we got the string converted to this you can perform this operation as many times as you want possibly zero it's up to you how many times you want to apply the operation is it possible to make the string a equal to string b note that you can modify only the string a not the string b this is what the problem says so in a nutshell in a nutshell the problem says that you can swap any a with a c if you have a b in between now it doesn't really matter whether b is coming up here 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 or here anywhere basically in between of this at any place if c is coming you can swap it you can swap this a with c so yeah there is one more thing c should be coming up after a c should be coming up after a if you have something like c coming up first and a coming up here you can't swap them here you can't swap them in this case you can swap an a with only a c on the right hand side or just say yeah, you can swap a c with some a on the left hand side and for this b the position you can notice that the position is not changing so can i say that if i have a c if i have a string s and a string t i think that i have not completed the problem uh, like completed the problem explanation once let me complete it um we have been told that we can apply this kind of an operation and what we want to do is we have been given some string a and some string b we want to apply this kind of an operation as many times as we want and convert this string a into string b and there is no limitation on the number of operations you can perform you don't have to minimize it you don't really care about it you just have to print either a yes or a no whether it is possible to convert string a into string b or not is the problem clear that what we have to do is this part clear
um, guys please tell me in chat yes or no whether the problem is clear or not okay clear um, okay great it's clear to most of you okay so now what we want is um yeah we know what we want now this one intuition which we had got or basically one observation which we had noticed first of all we can just raise up a, a constraint here that in the string a and the string b just to simplify our problem what you can do is just iterate over them and for every index i if ai is equal to equal to um okay while explanation i am using upper case a and b to denote these strings a and b in my code i would have used lower case characters lower case a and b here in case in the string a on the ith index of string a and on the ith index of string b um if this condition holds that ai is equal to b then ai must be equal to b ba and at the same time there is this is true even if um even in case if bi is equal to b then also both of these must be equal so you can just call it here also or bi is equal to b maybe we jumbled up, up a little bit let me repeat this once again what we did you notice that in the operation which you can perform you cannot swap the element b the character b with anyone else so if in the string a a character b is coming up and on the ith position then in the string b also it should come on the ith position on the string b if you are having a or c at that position then you can never uh, convert string a into string b with any operations and now because you cannot move b's around <clears throat> similarly if on some index in string b a b is coming then at the same index b should come in the string a as well because you cannot move b around and now so you can just say here if ai has b or bi has b then ai must be equal to b or you can just say yeah both of these things should either be true at the same time or should be false so what i did is i just used as or operator but if you want you can write uh, write it as this here yeah, either both of these characters either both of these people should be true or ai should not be equal to b and bi should not be equal to b this is nothing but uh, the zor operator and the zor operator can do the do both of this um i think the terms in right that sorry no, x nor operator not zor uh, you got the idea that either both of these should be b's or both of these should not be b and now coming back uh, to the main point that this is what you know this thing should happen in if this thing does not happen at for like if this does not happen for any of the i's then you can directly say no now the possible things are a a happen or c c happen basically for some i the elements uh, are both having a's or c's this is fine you don't really have any problem with it and something like this can happen that you have n like at some index in the array a you are have sorry in the string a you are having the character a but in the string b you wanted to have character c at that position and you are having character c at some position and at that position you are having a character a in the string b in this kind of a situation you can just swap these two people together to get to this place but one thing you require for it is there should be a b in between at any place but there should be a b in between okay so i think that we have got some idea let's connect all the dots now let's see what things we have noticed so far first of all first of all at any place if b is coming the other guy should also have b at the same place 
other thing if there are some a's or c's which are equal to each other you can just ignore it you don't really have any problem with it or you can just say yeah even for the b's if like just traverse over the string uh, just traverse over a loop of i equal to 0 till i is less than n and just say yeah if ai is equal to equal to bi then there is no problem in case in case in the other case if uh, you are having a b paired up with some other element let's say a or c then this is a problem just directly say no in case if a problem comes up like a c that you have an a in the string a but you want c in the string b and there is some c a pair like this then these pairs can be combined with each other just swap these people you should have a b in between this is the idea which we have got so far so what i did is i just stored all the pairs of c a wherever i get a c and a a i get a c and an a in the strings a and b i just stored all those indices and i stored all those indices wherever i get a b and then i traverse the uh, then i just had a loop from i equal to 0 till i less than i less than n basically i traverse both the strings at the same time and the said here at any place if i find this kind of a pair that you have an a in the string a and c in the string b then look up for the first possible occurrence of this kind of a pair which is having c and you want to have an a at that place and before that guy like whatever index you get let's say you got the index 10 here let's say you got the index 10 here then before that index 10 there should be some b as well in that case you can simply switch like the swap these two people right you can simply swap these two people in that case but what if there is no b in between then you know we are for this pair you will have to swap it with some other pair maybe there is some maybe there is a pair present here something like that you might have to swap it with some other person but the problem is if you were not able to swap with the ca right now then when will you swap with it because this pair can be swapped with like you can have a c being swapped by some a occurring on the left side only if if there is no b coming up in the way here you see a b but what if there was no b in the way then you will not be able to switch this like uh, move the c from here till to some other place and uh, in a nutshell you will just get the answer is no here in case if there was no b if there is a b here just swap these two people everyone is happy there is no problem with it so mota mota we have got some idea we just have understood ki what we have to do right and why we are doing it as well like you know you got to know about both the things we are what we have to do and why we are doing it. and uh, are we done let me think yeah there is one more thing you might ask me yeah raghav you said if i have a pair like ac i will swap it with this guy but i can swap it with this guy also i can swap it with this guy also why will i swap with this guy you can completely ask me this doubt this is completely okay now the answer is very simple you want to uh, like for this ca like for this c you have more chances of getting a b coming up before it so that you swap this c with somebody with some other pair of a comma c but for this guy who is coming up first has lesser chances of getting b in the way like if this b was not here you might get only one chance for this c this thing might happen like you can actually try to think more about it uh, i think that this is also doable now you can get the idea uh, if you just try to think of about like think a little more on the thing which i have said here ki for this for this c a pair which is coming up later on you can get more chances to fix up this mess in comparison to this thing. for this mess you might get lesser chances so this is why you want to take care of this guy first
and let's say if there is no ca pair available on the right in that case you might we will not be able to fix up this guy so mm, the thing is if you don't find any b in the way or you don't find up a, a ca pair which is having a b in the between or in the case if you don't even find a ca pair in all those cases basically if you're not able to fix up this guy then in that case you can simply return no i know that this might be looking up a little miss this has a lot of cases and it will be more clear once you try to put up a lot of efforts on it by yourself you can take this as an opportunity for learning uh, to take up like having multiple cases which becomes quite a mess uh, to basically get some experience on uh, handling a lot of cases uh, like in the previous problems we just had very easy if else cases right we just had very simple stuff but here you are having a lot of cases that what if b is not coming up these are not lined up what if something like this case fails what if the no if you see the number of a's the number of b's and the number of c's in the string a will remain same remain the same so in the string b you should have the same miller frequencies of a b and c's you have got one more case where you might say no you got a case no you got a case where you can say no that if you have an ac pair you do need to have it paired up with some ca pair for that you need to have a b pair in between bb pair if you see that there is either no ca pair available or no bb pair available or uh, the bb pair is not coming up in the path from the current guy to ca pair in all these cases you have to say no and i think that there is no need to more sim simplify more uh, simplify this more we have covered all the cases now you have to figure out on your own that in what way you can implement it uh, in the shortest way like whichever thing uh, looks the most convenient to you for implementing it i will show you my implementation which is quite a mess for now and in the description you will find a cleaner way of implementing it i will after the pcd implement it and then i will upload that in the description let me read the chat once and then we will go to the code uh, i just want to get some idea that how many of you got um, a good enough, good enough idea so that the problem is doable now how many of you are able to get till this point that now you feel that you can do the problem on your own? Uh, basically this is the main idea of attending a bct that you get some good hints so that you can do the problem on your own right this is the main idea um understood the part okay make bool prefix and suffix for b okay somebody is saying that we can create a prefix uh, boolean prefix array and suffix array just to make sure uh, like just to check if there is a b in the way or not for that um, this will not work because it is possible a b is coming up here and a b is coming up at both the edges and is not coming up in the um, between of the array i think that you got the mistake here uh, i find first and last ca pair um no that's not enough you have to find out all of them you have to fix up all the ca pairs as well yeah there is one more thing uh for the ac pairs you might be able to fix them but let's say you find up a ca pair in some at some place let's say you found a ca pair you know that ca pair could have been fixed by some ac pair on the left only but if you found a ca pair here while iterating from left to right there is nobody who can fix it so that is also a case where you will say no and there is and then there uh and then can check for a and c in the between okay can do now doable now can summarize the last logic part use a bit of binary search to find the index but i don't know where is it going now uh, how will you use a binary search like uh, have you created something like a prefix some array for that like i don't know where are you applying the binary search I don't really know where you are applying the binary search, and there is no need for binary search. Uh, yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, let me tell you how to check if there is a b in between. There can be multiple ways. In in my code, you will see for now, 
that I just created a vector of integers where I just stored all the places wherever I was finding a pair of these BB, a BB pair. Just all I just stored all those indices. But what you can do is let's say B is coming up here, here, maybe like more clearly. Let's say in the array, B is coming up here, 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 and here. Then what I can do is I can create a prefix of array. The values will be looking something like this. Right. It, the values will look something like this. Now, if you want to check whether there is a B available in this path or not, I can say from this guy, from this guy, subtract this. Um, sorry, protocol. Let me, let me decline it. Let's say, let, uh, let, let me take a different example. Let's say you want to find out whether there is a B available in this range or not. Then you can say this, um, this range as this prefix minus this prefix, right? So if this was your L and this was um, your R, then you can just simply say pre of R minus pre of L minus one. It will tell you the number of B's in this range, which is coming up to be two because three minus one comes up to be two. And that's how many prefixes you, uh, B's you have. So this is one way of checking the number of B's in the range, basically using a prefix of array. Or you could have done in the worst way in which I did during the contest. Not proper binary search, but storing the indices of BB, AC, CA. Okay, I can't really tell why your code is filling without looking at the code. And even if I, while looking at the code, it might be a bit difficult for me to find the mistake because I don't really know key, which logic we are using. T minus one is equal to two, which is greater than zero. So B is present. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so guys, um, what should we do next? I think that the problem is doable. You people also said that it is doable. So guys, should we move on to the code? Like, should I show you the code? By the way, my code is really weird. I won't really explain it, everything there. I will just show you the overview of that. I have done it in a very bad way. Like during the contest, I wrote something, then it did not work out. So I wrote something else, it did not work out. And I just wrote something really terrible. And during the contest, I can't really make my code look better. So we, I did just, I just did it uh, as much as required during the contest. Okay, the first thing is I did run up an edge case which might like it might the code might work even without it, but I just wrote it that in case if A and B are equal, then you don't really have to do anything, just say yes. In case, like in the other case, I just went up to the whole string, just traversed the whole string, calculated the frequency of each and every character inside a count array or an array with name count for both the frequencies, sorry, for both the strings. If I find AI, uh, like uh, as you see, just to check if this case is failing or not, if you guys know about Zor, you can actually write it as AI equal to equal to B, Zor, BI equal to equal to B. If you guys know about ZOR, it's good enough. Just try to see. You will be able to see give, uh, why it will work. If you don't know about ZOR, it's okay. Just write up this complete statement. And we actually care about the uh, problem here. That if both of these conditions are not true at the same time. Basically, if any one of these conditions is failing, you just want to see that. Actually, if both of these conditions are failing, you just want to see that. Okay. Um, if you got the idea, like it's not a hard thing to code up on your own. Uh, I just use the odd thing. In case if one of them is B equal to B and the other one is not equal to B, then just return no. Otherwise, and I'm just, uh, yeah. One more thing I did is just figured out the first and the last occurrence of B, which I think is not having any contribution in my approach. I think I can just remove it. 
I think that the number of times A and C are coming should be equal. Again, I think that even if I remove this condition, the code will still work, but this is just a check. And uh, then I did run up a for loop to find out all the positions of B and all the positions of these CA pairs, reverse them. And after that, I did some mess here that I think might be a bit overwhelming for you people to just see. I think that you people should like, in case if you're able to understand it's well, in case if you don't understand it's okay. This is really bad code. I'm admitting that the code quality is really bad here. This is some unnecessary code. Um, if you remember in the logic, we had been talking about that you cared about all the AC pairs, all the pairs of AC where you are having A in the string A and C in the pair, uh, C in the string B, these pairs. And you cared about all the C A pairs, sorry, not this one, but these pairs, C A pairs. Where you, have, where you are having C in the string A and A in the string B. And you care about all the BB pairs where you are having B and B in both the strings. So for that, I just stored the C A pairs and the BB pairs in position B, pos C, basically two vectors with these two names. And then I went up traversing over the string once again. I like you can ignore this post b thing the main idea is that we are just um trying to make sure like trying to keep the next position of b in <clears throat> at the back of post b in the at the back of the position b it will keep the position of the next b you can use a prefix summary like prefix sum is a better way you will i will actually use this thing in the code you will find in the description and uh, in case if I find a C, a C pair, then I'm looking up for the next place where position of C is coming. Basically, the next place where C A pair is coming. If I don't find a C A pair, or if I don't find a B B pair, basically these two things. Or if I find that C A pair is coming before the B B pair, the next B B pair. So this is also something where I had to return no. In all these cases, I'm returning no. Otherwise, I'm swapping A B C. <coughs> I'm converting the subsequence ABC into CBA. So, which means that I'm just swapping these two and the CA pair would be resolved. So, I'm just popping it back. And at any place, if I find out a CA pair, which we know that cannot be resolved anymore, we did talk about this during the explanation. Then, in that case as well, I'm just returning no. Otherwise, I'm returning yes. Now, I know I do completely admit that the approach might look a bit overwhelming and the code quality is really bad so just don't really worry about the implementation forget about it uh, i think that it would be better if you implement it on your own and i can give a better way of implementation in the description later on basically by the time when you would be watching the video you will have it in the description i believe or maybe one day later of after one day uh, at last i messed up um, from where did you lose the focus? DP is C and T. Um, where is DP? I don't know. Uh, what about other people? Like, uh, are you people satisfied with it for now? That this is something doable? I know that it has a lot of test cases. Like, not test cases, but a lot of cases. And the code is bad. But guys, are you satisfied that now you would like to attempt it on your own? Now you feel that you can at least give a give an honest attempt for yeah the overall idea seems doable yeah and at last the, the the most important thing if you want a very good explanation like a very uh, step by step implementation basically you see that there are a lot of cases which might be jumbled jumbled up right now but if you want all of them in a good order then look at the code chef editorial. Then go to the code chef editorial. You will find this thing in discuss.codechef.com, I think. Something like this is the URL. You can just search about it, you will find out. Uh, just go there. They have very high quality editorials. Since you have watched the video editorial, you would have got a rough idea of what we are doing and the approach in which we were thinking. And 
in case if you fail to do it and you want to have all these cases in a systematic way i believe that the editorial will definitely have a very good one but the implementation is something we need to spend more time yeah implementation is something you originally ideally you are expected to do it on your own uh, for whatever help you are getting from internet maybe from editorials or this video solution or from whatever place this is a bonus you are getting don't try to be dependent on it this is something you are originally supposed to do by yourself or look at the ed official audit uh, editorial right okay so i think that we are done with the problem mota mota logic is clear uh, the implementation is the implementation part is something like for somebody like me or i think that uh, for somebody like an expert this is something would be easy like any expert or even some specialist will be able to understand it but right now i'm considering that what if a newbie or a pupil is watching then this would be looking like some overwhelming stuff for that i'm um, asking you that you should watch up this stuff yeah and for anybody above specialist especially for expert i would not recommend to go to editorial i would say that you have to do it on your own this is not a hard problem and even the approach which i have discussed should be easy for you okay so let's move on to the last problem for today array operations um this problem oh wait we have two problems there okay sorry i thought that we were doing the last second problem okay no problem array operations let me look at the timings i think the pcd has gone a little longer than array operations the h index of an array is defined as uh, defined to be the maximum integer h such that there are at least h elements in the array which are greater than or equal to h you are being given an integer array a and a positive integer k you have to do the following operations as many times as you want basically we have been given an array a and an integer k and we can perform this operation any number of times it does not have anything to do with h notice this part the array we have the integer k we have the operation which we can perform does not have anything to do with h so we the operation which we can perform is pick up any two integer any two indices a and sorry i and j such that ai is not sorry ai is divisible by k and aj is not divisible by k then divide ai with k the element which was divisible by k just divide it by k and the other element which was not divisible by k multiply that element by k and then we have to find the maximum possible h index of a that can be attained after performing the above operation as many times as we want so we have been told an array is known as h index if it has at least h elements if it has at least h elements which are greater than or equal to h right this is what we have been told and we have been told that we have an array of size a we have been given some integer k we can perform a kind of operation as many times as we want the operation is choose up any integer i and j such that ai is divisible by k which means that ai mod k is equal to equal to 0 and aj is not divisible by k such which means that aj mod k should not be equal to 0 this is what we have been told like you have to choose such kind of i and j for, for performing the operation then the operation which you will perform is from where is it coming okay you can say ai 
being divided as so just say that ai is equal to ai divided by k and aj is equal to aj into k right that's what we can do so this is what we can do in one operation and after like we can perform as many operations as we want after which once we are done um, we want to find out the largest possible value of h such that the array is h index we want to find out the largest possible value of h such that the array after for performing these operations is h index and we have to perform these operations in such a way like we want to perform these operations in such a way that we can find out the largest possible h index value find the maximum possible h index of a that can be attained after performing above operation as many times as you like fine guys please tell me whether the problem is clear or not okay i think that the problem is clear nobody said no two people said yes okay three people said yes great first of all the very first intuition i had here is like as soon as i wrote, read this line that um, at least h elements in the array which are greater than or equal to h if the value of h is greater like uh, let's say let's say you say here in the array it is passing the condition for h equal to 10 like there are 10 elements actually more than 10 elements at least 10 elements in the array which are greater than or equal to 10 let's say if this condition is fulfilled then does it mean that like can i say there will be at least nine such elements which are greater than or equal to 10 right i can say this thing i can easily say this thing because i know here if there are 10 elements which are greater than 10 there will be nine elements nine I can just say that nine of those would also be greater than ten, and it means that nine of those would also be greater than nine since they are greater than ten, which means that the array will fulfill the condition of nine index also. Like, it, if it was a ten index array, like if it was having the condition fulfilled for ten index, though it they say that we are talking about the maximum integer h which follows it. Uh, you got the idea that if an array can fulfill this condition, then it can fulfill this condition as well. And in case if the array was not able to fulfill this condition, let's say this condition was not fulfilled, then at least 11 elements being greater than or equal to 11 would also be not fulfilled. Like if it is not fulfilled, then this can also be not fulfilled. From there, I already got the idea that hey, for the array, I can run up a binary search. I can run up a binary search. I know that if it follows the condition for h equal to 10, then for all the people on the left, it will have true, true, true. And if it fails for h equal to 14, then for all the people on the right, it will have false, false, false. Uh, you can have this kind of the predicate function, TTTFFF. Yeah, exactly. Kashish also wrote this thing in the chat. Now, you know how, like, uh, the only problem now you have is, can you check for h equal to 10? For the array which has been given to you, can you check if it is possible to have 10 elements in the array greater than or equal to 10 after performing some operations? Is it possible? So. For that, the idea which I had is all the elements which are less than 10, sorry, less than h. <clears throat> if like, uh, let's say h is equal to 10 here. Uh, let me take up an example to give you an idea. n is equal to 5, h is equal, to, sorry, not h, but k is equal to 2. And let's say the elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you talk about h equal to maybe 2. So, or maybe let's say have 
let's have it this thing as three here and uh, h equal to three and dk is equal to uh, two here or maybe three like what whatever whatever we have the basic idea is for all the elements which are greater than or equal to h they can contribute to those people like there are two type of people the two type of elements which are greater than equal to h or which are less than h we want this many people like the count of all of these people count of such elements to be greater than equal to h right the elements which are greater than equal to h we want the count of such elements to be greater than equal to h this is what i want so i would like to um have more and more elements here now if there is um maybe i can take up the test case like i have the idea but i'm just wondering uh, which test case to take for giving the idea let's say n is equal to 5 k is equal to 2 3 5 4 3 5 4 1 10. yeah this kind of a case here if you want to find whether it is possible to have h equal to 3 or not then you can just see here there are four elements which are greater than three so obviously you have got it right it is obviously possible right so it is possible for h equal to one two and three you know about it because you saw that it is possible for h equal to three now let's talk about h equal to five if you try to check about it you will like let's forget about five for now let's check for four let us check out check out for four this guy this guy is greater than four this guy is greater than four this guy is greater than four and to be more precise these three people are greater than h uh, greater than equal to h now you want to have four people you want to have four people who are greater than equal to h but you have got only three people how can you make one more person to be greater than equal to four we know that we can divide some element which is divisible by k let's say that you take up this 10 divide it by 2 make it 5 and take this 3 which is not divisible by 2 not divisible by k and make it equal to 6 in that way you will still have this guy to be greater than equal to 4 and this guy will also become greater than equal to 4 this gave me the intuition like just looking at the test case this gave me the intuition here if i have some element let's say ai which is greater than equal to h and this ai is divisible by k as well and ai by k is also greater than equal to h like in this case this element is greater than h that is 4 this element is greater than 4 this element is divisible by 2 and if i divide this element by 2 it is still greater than h then would it be better for me to keep it as 10 or just say here i can use this element someday so maybe i can just maintain a variable with name let's say count k and make it one that hey i do have an element which i can someday use to have like to play the role of ai in the operation you know that ai will be divided and aj will be multiplied so there is some element which i can use uh, as ai now let's say if this guy was actually 20 will i only make it to 10 no i will actually make it to 5 right pretty obvious so while these three conditions are true while these conditions are true i can just divide this ai while these are true divide ai by k and increment count k exactly similarly if i have if i had an element let's say 2 if 2 is having k inside it if it is like 2 is an element which is smaller than h and it is divisible by k 
then the only way in which it can contribute like you see that if there is an element which is divisible by k you cannot pick it as aj aj must not be divisible by k so if there is an element which is smaller than h and it is divisible by uh, k then the only way in which it can contribute is become smaller that's his life right for this guy this is its life that it can contribute by just becoming zero so in the similar way like as you had been doing here just do it for this guy that while this guy is divisible by k just divide it just say here ai should be divided by k and count k should be incremented similarly you might have some people who are smaller than h but are not divisible by k these are the people having some potential of being multiplied with right this 3 is a person who has the potential of being multiplied by k so if in case for such an element which is smaller than k uh, okay smaller than h actually um, yeah let me write it more clearly clearly here we have seen that if uh, let me call the value basically let me say that val is equal to ai uh, because you never want to make changes in the original array you just never want to make change the original array right you never want to alter it so let's store it store its value inside some other integer let's say val if this val is smaller than h and val is divisible by k so as long as it is divisible by k just say your val will be divided by k and the count of k will be incremented right if val is divisible by k sorry is sorry if val is less than h and it is not divisible by k right and like if it is less than h and it is not divisible by k it cannot contribute in this way the previous person was doing but there is a different way in which it can contribute what if along with these two conditions val into k is greater than or equal to h then this is a possible candidate if somebody else works as the ai the person who will be divided if you remember earlier we talked about ai and aj if somebody else let, let me okay for this explanation let me call this as a donor who will donate a k from himself and this is an acceptor he will accept a do uh, accept uh, the factor k basically get multiplied with k so if this guy or uh, when accepts a k can become greater than equal to h basically he will be a person who will contribute for these people who are greater than equal to h he can become one of them then in that case for these people i just created a variable with name let can become i just created a variable with name can become initialized with zero i will here say here can become will be incremented hey that i found a person who can become one of you who can become greater than h if he gets a donor for the other people if value is greater than equal to h and val is not equal to 0 if the value is not equal to 0 there is nothing we can do like you know that the value of this guy is greater than h but he cannot act as a donor so all he can do is just contribute to be one of the people who are greater than equal to k let me count let me say this thing as count h c n t h that is the number of people count of ai which are greater than equal to h so in this case like this is this guy is just having some contribution for count of h to be incremented simple for the other person who is greater than h and can be divided by k for that guy he will do the exact same thing which this guy was doing like uh, we just saw it earlier that as long as val divided by k is zero like while this condition is true that while this guy is divisible by k and val by k the new value which it will have is greater than equal to h 
टिल दैट अमाउंट टिल दैट टाइम जस्ट इंक्रीमेंट काउंट किए एंड डिक्रीमेंट वैल लाइक जस्ट रिड्यूस इट बाई सो यू वुड हैव गॉट द नंबर ऑफ फैक्टर्स ऑफ के विच यू आर गेटिंग फॉर फ्री like all the elements which were smaller than h are still smaller than h and like you got it from here or for from the people who are smaller than h and from the people who are greater than h you have not made them smaller than h you have kept them greater than h and you have got all the um uh, all the what to say factors of k or maybe uh, multiples of k whatever they could donate basically you have got them as donors so now count k is the number of donors you have got so far uh yeah i will give a bit of the overview of all of it yeah okay count of k is nothing but the number of donors you have got so far and uh, can become is the number of people who um can act as an acceptor to become one of the um contributors for cnth count of h right now my claim is like uh, whatever is the minimum one of them let's say the minimum of count k like the minimum of both of these things that many people can like uh, let's say if there are 10 times you can multiply some other numbers with k like there are 10 times you can divide some number uh, in total by k so that some other 10 people can be multiplied with k and there are four people who when multiplied with k will become greater than equal to h so whatever is the minimum one of them you can in increase your count h by that much amount right these many contributions can can happen and now the number of can become will be subtracted by minimum like four of them who could become greater than equal to h has now become greater than equal to h so these will be removed and these will be reduced um so count k would also be reduced by mn and that's what i thought initially that's what i thought of initially so what we have seen so far in this problem is you had an array like we did apply a binary search for the value of h now for a particular value of h if you want to check if it is possible to make the array h um what what did they use h index if it is possible to make the array h index or not with the help of the integer k and these operations we just saw that for all the people who were less than k sorry who were less than h let me just feel it here all the people who were less than h could not really contribute much all they could do for contribution is get reduced by k again and again as long as they are divisible by k and Uh, act as donors these people are just acting as donors these people are possible acceptors sorry possible contributors for count h by accepting um by accepting a k uh, by work acting as an acceptor in some operation right so the people who are less than h but when being multiplied with k can become greater than equal to h and are not divisible by k only then these people can be multiplied and in in case if the person is greater than h and is not divisible by k in that case he can't act as a donor and there is nothing to do with this guy being and working as an acceptor because he is already greater than equal to h uh here yeah. and for the people who are greater than equal to h they can donate like they will donate as long as they can while maintaining their position of being greater than equal to h so you would have got some number of donors and you would have got some number of acceptors uh some good acceptors which accept a donor which accept a k and become greater than equal to h then you know that this is something obvious just make all the people who can whom you can make equal to greater than equal to h by doing something like this whatever is the minimum number of um, c and t k and count become that many times just um choose these people as the acceptors and these people as the donors make these pairs so that you will have got count as count as the number of people being greater than equal to h being incremented by the minimum of these two after that the thing is we have missed one case yet there is one more case which you have to care about 
what if um there is something like 1 1 and uh let me think uh let's say if there is something like 3 3 and a 4 yeah if the array is something like 3 3 4 k is equal to 2 here and you want to check for h is equal to, h is equal to 2 then in that case you have got only one person who is greater than okay sorry i'm still not working here uh, let's say that uh, there are two more occurrences of h and here h is equal to 4 maybe oh no sorry it was it was already fine yeah i had written it correctly uh, what if k is equal to 2 and is here 3 there are these three elements in the array and h is equal to 2 here you are not having actually you are having it actually you are having it let's say that you want four people here okay now it's fine let us say you have been given an array like 3 3 4 4 4 and k is equal to 2 h is equal to 4 so you want to have four people who are greater than equal to four now there are three people who are greater than equal to four none of them can donate anything while maintaining their position of being greater than equal to four and these people are good acceptors if they get some donor they can get greater than equal to h but they don't have any donor right now. right in this kind of a case if this four had broken down into 2 and then 1 basically if we had lost his position but if he had acted as a donor two times these two people could have become 6 and 6 and you could have got um five no sorry yeah this person is not a donor anymore uh, this is not a donor anymore so sorry not a position holder anymore so these two and these two you have got four people who are greater than equal to Sorry, greater than equal to h, right? So we got an idea that sometimes for some people who are greater than equal to h, it might make sense for them to be broken down and uh, some position holders to so, sorry some people who are possibly position holders if they get some acceptors, uh, some donate donors uh, can actually evolve. i think that you got the idea that this four could have actually been divided by two two times and these three be, these three and three could have been multiplied with two and two now before going on to how to handle it the thing is how did i get this idea how did i get this idea the thing is at this place like for this person it was obvious that there is nothing which better can happen for this guy for the person who is less than h and k as divisible by k here as long as you are divisible by k just uh, just get divided this is the best contribution you can make for this person you know that the best contribution you can make is like you can't donate anything but if you accept something you can become a position holder basically someone who is greater than equal to h so this is something in this is the way in which you can do, uh, contribute the best for the array for this guy there is nothing you can do for the contribution like the only thing you are doing for contribution is this thing for the fourth guy i just said here as long as you keep yourself being greater than equal to h yeah by the way you will have count h being implemented as well as long as th that condition is true just keep yourself being divided again and again but there was no guarantee that this is the best contribution for this person the at that point i had in mind that what if it is at some place better to div get this person smaller than h get multiple count k extracted from him basically get this person in um this category uh, this category the first one get this person into that category sorry actually this person into that category and extract a lot of count k from it so this is where i got this idea and then i tried to think of a test case where it's actually working and i don't remember what test case i uh, thought of at that time but this is something similar 
where uh, it is better to break down one of the people who is greater than equal to h to make two other people become equal to greater than equal to h so the key idea is if there is an element let's say 20 k is equal to 2 and h is equal to 4 then obviously divide this guy as long as this guy stays greater than equal to h till this point it is obvious that you will definitely do after this once it is 5 uh, in this case it is not really divisible but in let's say that if it was divisible in some other case uh, let's say if there was some other value of h and like array, whatever yeah let's say let's say that we have 16 here and you got to 8 and then you got to 4 then from here on you could have gone till this part like till this point it is obvious after this this is not obvious we might do we might not do what I did is I just said here yeah, I will keep track that I do have one of the people who can sacrifice himself to increase count k by 2. I just kept track of it. Till this point I incremented count k because this per person was not having any loss since he was still greater than equal to h. After this, uh, after this when I could not apply any operation in this way, I said here. Yeah, I will keep track of number of times I can still divide you if I sacrifice you in the future. So if you can increase count k by at least 2, then in that case I will push you inside some set or a priority queue wherever just to know here I have this person. If the increase you can make is less than equal to 1, then there is no point of sacrificing you because you are not giving me a lot of stuff after sacrifice. Right. So if you can sacrifice yourself to give me at least two, uh, at least donate two, two times, then it's good. And after all I did here, like everything I had done till this point, uh, now we have noticed that the only thing which we had missed for this, I did run up a while loop. While I have these kind of elements which can sacrifice themselves, looking at the largest one, the largest guy who can like basically the person who can uh, donate the most if he satisfies himself so you know the number of times he can donate so for this like because if you sacrifice this person the count will be reduced by one and the value of count k will be increased by um last the number of times this person is sacrificing himself sorry the number of times this person will be divided if he sacrifices himself and after that you can just repeat these three steps once again just to see the new number of people who would now become greater than equal to h so here i had to only two conditions that i should have somebody who can sacrifice himself to make at least two more people greater than equal to h and the value of can become should also be greater than equal to h if I don't have those people who can become greater than or equal to H, if I don't have at least two people, then there is no point of sacrificing something. Right. So probably you got the idea. Like not just the idea, we have actually discussed the complete approach along with um, overview of the implementation. So guys, uh, what's your feedback for this problem? Shall we move on to the code or is there some problem? This is a bit difficult. Um, I think that this is not really difficult in comparison to the level at which it is coming. Like for being the D problem of div2, I think it's a decent one. Or maybe a bit simpler than what we expect for div2D. Um, but yeah, I think that you were the pupil. So for a pupil, this might be hard. Um, what is its rating? I think for... Um, if it comes in code forces, it should be something like 1600. Uh, by the way, many people missed this test case. Like many people missed this edge case of removing someone from his position to do good for the other people. I know two masters who missed this actually in today's contest. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let me show you my code. The code is almost the similar as what we did in the um, approach. 
uh, by the way i use this define int long long thing which will like wherever i have written int keyword it will just make it uh, it will replace it by long long in the preprocessing i did it so that i don't have to worry about overflows uh, i am taking the inputs here after taking inputs um, like ignore this lambda function we have been applying a binary search from s is equal to 1 till e is equal to n because you know that at the very least the array will definitely have one element being greater than equal to 1 and in the maximum case you can have n elements being greater than equal to n you cannot have anything more you cannot have n plus one, one elements in the array itself answer is equal to s initially uh, because you know that answer will at least be equal to 1 then we are having a simple binary search where we are checking for the mid by calling a function the, like this is valid is my predicate function here now let's look at the predicate function i am having a variable count k rick rick is the number of uh, elements i need more basically instead of having count h instead of having something like count h being initialized with zero being incremented everywhere and then at last checking count h to be greater than equal to h i did it in the other way i had a variable rec with name like i had a variable with name rec which is a short form of required initialized with h every time i found a person greater than equal to h i rec like uh, decreased rec by one and at last i returned rec being smaller than equal to zero if it is the case then it's fine like that's the only difference in count test and trick these are the only like these are almost similar i think you got the main idea here also and i did create a multi set to keep track of the largest people or like you can just keep uh, you can just create a vector of integers and then sort it in the reverse order or straight order like in any way you want there is no need of a multi set actually i am going on to each and every element if the element is less than h uh, instead of writing up these four test like these four cases as i did in the explanation i wrote them combined combined in the combined way i said that hey value if value is less than h as long as it is divisible by k divide it and in case of multiplying it with k gives you something greater than equal to h then increase it and then increase the value of can become now see if value was originally divisible by k then this thing will happen a lot of times and after which value into k will definitely be less than equal to h will definitely be less than h because value was originally less than h and you have divided the value by k a few times at least once in case if value was divisible by k so this thing will never be true and you will never have this condition in the other case if value was never divisible by k then this thing will not have any effect on your uh, value and you will just have this condition being checked so this is how i wrote the code a little shorter this is how i wrote the code a little shorter in the else condition if the value is greater than equal to h i am having these two conditions basically just checking as long as you can take out h as long as you can take out k from the value uh, just take it out and the value is still greater than h these are the free count case then after that these are the extra ones which you can get if you sacrifice this guy um i just calculated it in the same way you can read it out and uh, like reduce the value of requirement because uh, rick is the number of more people we need being greater than equal to h so we have got one person here that's why we are uh, reducing it and then ignore this tpg here i am just doing that thing of king here what is the minimum number of um, like what is the number of maximum number of uh, people who can become greater than equal to h this will be equal to minimum of both of these actually i should have written mx here but anyways and make like that many people being greater than equal to h so requirement will reduce by mn and uh, count k will also reduce by mn because we have been using this many donors and 
can become well also reduced by men because you have got these many donors uh, greater than equal to it, right? And then there is the while loop, which is checking that as long as you have two or more people who can become greater than equal to two, and you are having some people who can sacrifice themselves to um, any like to donate two or more times. If you are donating at least two times only, then we have pushed it inside the set. So in that case. Look at the largest value. Remove it from set. The count k will increase by last, but a person will be sacrificed. The rec which was being um, in decreased earlier will now be increased back again. And here you are just checking that uh, like the exact same thing which we were doing earlier. We are just doing that once again. And uh, then at the end we are saying that requirement should be less than equal to zero. If it is, then it means that. It means that you can have H index array, otherwise you can't. Uh, somebody is asking that what is this line? So if you want to find out the largest element inside a set, then um, like I know I hope that you know what is OPP dot begin. This will give you an iterator. And if you dereference it, you will get the value at that position. Similarly, if you say OPP dot R begin, it will give you the address of the last element. And if you dereference it, you will get the value. Actually, if you had used OPP dot R begin, it would have given you the iterator, reverse iterator of the last position. And saying it in this way will give you actually the value. Can we do it like dot n minus one? Um, the other way of doing it is like this. See, you can't say something like you can't say something like this. In a set, there are some different iterators. These are not like vectors. So either you can call it like this, or you can just write it like this one. This looks a bit better to me. Uh, that's why I write it like this. But it's up to you in whatever way you want to write. Okay, so I think that this is also clear. Great. I'm happy that you liked it. Now we have only one left. One problem left that is purify it. Let me look at the charging. Okay, it's on charging. Great. Okay, so this is uh, the final problem which we will discuss today. It has two subtasks. I have solved only the first one, I could not solve the second one. Um, for the first subtask, L is always equal to one, so we will only talk about that. Uh, the problem says that we have been given two integers L and R. We want to purify each integer in this range to purify an integer. Yeah, we want to purify each and every integer in this range. And we have been told that if you want to purify an integer X between L and R, you must pay a cost which is computed as follows. Choose an integer K and some integers A1 to AK. Basically choose K integers, which are all lying inside the range from L to R and their LCM should be equal to L. The cost of purifying X using these integers equals to maximum of all of these elements. And then they have given an example that let's say if L is equal to 12 and R is equal to 74 and X is equal to 60. In that case, choosing elements like 20, 30, 20, 60 will give you cost 60, 60 is the maximum element and the LCM is equal to X. Whereas if you choose something like 20, comma 30 it will give you a cost of 30 here also the gc sorry lcm is equal to x that is 60 or if you choose something like 12 comma 20 but it will also give you a cost of 20 and uh, the lcm here is also equal to 60 so it's also gonna work and in case if you had chosen this kind of a uh, sorry uh, yeah sorry we cannot choose this sequence here because l is equal to 12 but if L was equal to one in or like whatever we discussed today, like in this editorial, we will have L equal to one everywhere because we solve only the subtask one. In that kind of a case, this sequence will be the best thing you can have. And uh, here it is not going to work because L is 12 and you cannot have anything less than 12. Um, but for L equal to one, it will work. And we have to find out the minimum cost to purify each and every integer from L to R inclusive inclusive of L and R. And we have to independent T independent test cases. 
Okay, so let me explain it once again here also. Let me make it a little smaller. There are not too, too many people in the class right now. Only a few people are left. Let's say, uh, wait, we don't really have an array, sorry. We don't have an array here. We have been given some integer x. The cost to purify it is, you have to choose some elements, some indices, some elements AI. Um, yeah, some elements AI. Let's say you chose K elements. Um, then for all the AI, they should be in the range from L till R for all I in range from 0 till K minus 1. Uh, so basically, all the you just choose k elements all of them should be in the range from l to r and the lcm of all of these the lcm of all of these should be equal to x that's what you want this is what you want and the cost will be equal to maximum of a0 till a of k minus 1 whatever elements you had, you had chosen the maximum of all of these will be the cost. Now, what you want to do is you want to find out the minimum possible cost for each and every x. Like one thing very obvious here is whatever is the cost for 17, it does not have any significance. Like it does not depend on in any way to what will be the cost of 18 or 16. It is something different from 17 is different from 18. It is just different from 16 their costs will not depend upon anyone else so we are already getting one idea that since the cost of x depends only upon l and r we can uh, one by one find out the uh, best possible cost for each and every x in the range from l to r the second thing is let's say if l is equal to one we are talking only about the subtask one for now and r can be anything r can be anything but l will always be one and you have to find out the cost for each and every x let us say we are talking about x is equal to 20. now this is something i know from experience that if you have to choose some elements whose lcm should be uh, equal to x um, let's say that 20 here is equal to 2 raised to the power 2 and 5 raised to the power 2 whatever elements you choose one of them must have 2 raised to the power 2 inside it multiplied with something. One of other, one of the other people or maybe this one, at least one of the elements which you will choose in the um, k elements whose LCM should be equal to x, they should have 5 raised to the power 2 being multiplied to something. Let's take an example that uh, for 60, which is equal to um, 2 raised to the power 2 into 3 into 5 here um, in this kind of a case whatever multiples you choose like 20 30 20 60 20 30 20 60 this guy is nothing but 2 square into 5 this guy is nothing but 2 into 3 into 5 this guy is nothing but 2 square into 5 this guy is nothing but 2 square 3 into 5 so at uh, there will be at the very least one of these numbers who will have two raised to the power two inside it. There will be at least one person who will have three being uh, three raised to the power one inside it. There are two cases here, but there will be at least one. There will be at least one guy who is having five inside it. Here in this case, all of the people are having. Uh, this is just something I'm trying to tell you about. Uh, on how I got this idea. So overall the thing is, if you say that X is the LCM of A0, A1 and A2 and X is equal to, um, let's say A0 is equal to P1 square P2, A1 is equal to P1, P2, P3 square. 
and a2 is equal to p1 p2 cube p3 p4 something like this where p1 p2 p3 all of these are the prime numbers i am just writing them in prime factorization then their lcm will be equal to the maximum possible power i got at any place for p1 that is p1 square the maximum possible power i got for p2 that is p uh, cube p2 cube for p3 i got square and for p4 i got a power 1 right the lcm will be equal to this and now this is something we already know i know let's say here x is my lcm that's what i want then at least one of these people must be having p square only then p square will come up in the lcm of, of all of these people right so at least one of these people should have p1 square at least one of these people should have p2 cube at least one of these people should have p3 square at least one of these people should have p4 and at the same time none of these should have anything greater if there is anything like p1 cube then the lcm will come out to be p1 cube instead of p1 square so you have one limit on that as well let's save it basically i just wanted to give you some idea of what i already knew about so from there i already had the idea that if i want to find out like if i want um yeah if i want to have x the lcm of three numbers and uh, like I, if i have to choose three numbers whose lcm x will be or actually i don't have any limit i can choose any number of elements and let's say if x is equal to p1 square p2 cube p3 ki power 1 and p4 power let's say 2 anything like that then what i will do is i will choose exactly four elements k will be equal to 4 like uh, if you remember in the problem they said that you can have k number of elements like if you just choose any integer k and have that many integers so i will choose k equal to 4 there and i will have a1 equal to p1 square a2 equal to p2 cube a3 equal to p3 p3 ki power 1 basically and a4 is equal to p1 p4 square something like this this is what i will take since i want the maximum of these people to be smallest i would like to have these people to be the smallest i cannot make them any smaller because if i make them any any smaller then their lcm will not be equal to x and and i know that right now their lcm is equal to x and these are in the smallest state so whatever maximum i get from these these a1 a2 a3 a4 for now is the minimum possible cost of purifying x right now i know that all of these powers since x is less than equal to r right now i'm talking about some x which is lying in the range from l to r and l is here one l is here equal to one uh, since x is less than equal to r all of these people would also be less than equal to r always less than equal to r so the cost of x is not really depending upon r whatever the value of r is it does not really matter if you ever get an x all these people like would definitely be less than equal to r in any case and all of these would definitely be less greater than equal to one also so you notice that the cost for x does not depend upon l or r none of them like when you know that l will be equal to one uh, it will never ever depend upon r in any case or maybe it might depend upon r if l is if l can not if l is not fixed to one then it might depend on r also but for now when l is l is fixed to one the possible like the cost of x is fixed right the cost of purifying x is fixed when you know that l is 1 and r can be anything so what you can do is since there are only a few possible things like l and r can be only up till 10 to 10 is the power 5 you can pre calculate the cost of x pre calculate it for all x from 1 to 3 e5 basically 3 into 10 is the power 5 just pre-calculate it for everything and after that 
once you would have pre-calculated it for each and every person whenever you get a query of l comma r where l is equal to 1 you have to do nothing but just return the sum of sum of cost of x for all x in the range from 1 till r right this is something again you can just pre-calculate you can create a prefix sum array of size r where uh, pre of r basically so pre of i will have sum of cost of maybe let's say cost of j for all j in the range from 1 till i this is something doable right and i do expect that if you are coming up to this problem you are already an experienced coder so what you can do is just maybe take help of c or i think that c is the only way which we can do here for uh, uh, basically finding out these elements for prime factorizing x basically just prime factorize x get these people find out the maximum of them to find out the cost of x so this is how you can find out the cost of x using this c like with the help of c you can get these a1 a2 a3 and all of these prime with the help of prime factorization and then you can take up the max of them to get the cost whatever cost you get and after that you can just pre-calculate the prefix sum array also then for each and every query from l to r you already know that l will be equal to r l will be equal to 1 your answer will be nothing but pre of r just print pre of r and that's it so that's what i did in my code let me show you my code also here in this case i'm having a diff a little different way of writing my template instead of having a global very global function for solve i created a lambda function here so that whatever i declare above it for the pre-computation purpose i can use it inside my function um, inside the function i'm doing nothing but just uh, in the solve function i'm doing nothing but just taking l and r as input and printing pre of r the main thing is in the pre-computation uh, for pre-computation first of all i applied c to find out the lowest prime factor for each and every number in the range from 1 till 3 into 10 is the power 5 plus 5 plus 5 keeping this plus 5 for a buffer as a buffer after that um, you can name it as cost but by mistake i named it as answer uh, this answer of i is actually telling about the cost in the explanation i named it as cost uh, in this i have been storing uh, like for every number i know uh, if you know about prime factorization once you have done c to find out the lowest prime factor for every number this is something happens in big of logging that uh, i said that let's say i store the value of i inside the inside some variable v and as long as that variable v is not equal to 1 which means that it must have a prime factor i am um, incrementing that prime factor inside a variable and uh, have been dividing v um, by the smallest prime factor of v so that eventually i will get the prime factorization of this number uh, yeah i will get the prime factorization of uh, this number and uh, then i am just calculating the maximum possible cost then i am uh, assigning answer i basically initializing answer i with uh, the maximum possible cost i have got i should have actually named it as cost here not answer let me update it and here also this is the cost i and my pre of i which is actually uh, having the sum of all the cost i from 0 till i i am just calculating pre i as well uh, here in this loop if you want you can run up another loop and uh, then like once the pre computation is done you can just answer the queries in big of one time so this is something i think it will work uh, like sorry i have already submitted it it did work out um i think that it should be a bit comfortable now on top answer should be cost huh? where at what top oh sorry this thing was pre um and this is cost 
Okay, sorry, I that was a timing error. Yeah, anyways. I think that this problem is also doable now. We did discuss it about it completely for the first subtask one. For the subtask two, the problem is quite difficult. Not too many people were able to uh, complete it. Uh, I'm pupil, it's too hard for me to understand. Yeah, like for a pupil, I think that it's it might be a bit hard. And even if you're not able to implement it, it's fine. Um, it's great that you attended the PCD till the end. I have personally seen this, that the people who are willing to put up efforts, even though they know that the thing will be difficult if they are still putting up efforts, in the longer run, they do that. Um, the people who just give up at the beginning, I'm also one of them a lot of times, that I just give up a lot of times. Um, actually turns out to be bad. Yeah, to everyone who ever has it until the end, till the end, it's a really good job. You will definitely have very good results in the longer run. Okay, so let me stop the recording and then we can have some talk if you want to ask me something. Uh, by the way, for the people who have it, uh, watched the video on YouTube, uh, you if you like the video, if you got to learn something new from it, you can consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Please give your feedback in the comment section whether you like the video or not. If you found some mistake, then please mention it in the comment section. If you liked the video really much or if you felt that there was some really good part in the video, then you can actually give the timestamp and mention it that you like the timestamp, uh, you like that uh, explanation or anything like that. I would love to see your comments.